Hey everyone, I'm Mason and I'm a developer advocate at DigitalOcean. We've gotten a lot of questions on our YouTube videos uh, regarding app platform and specifically the Django app that I've deployed. So today I'm just going to go ahead and go through those and uh, hopefully answer some of your questions. Yes, I will definitely make a video showing how to use uh, Cron and the jobs with Django uh, for some of the manage.py tasks. Some of these you would be able to do uh, Cron jobs for, uh, specifically you're managing the, the database, so when you do your database migrations, uh, you would probably be able to do those for. Others, such as maybe creating the super user, I would be a little bit weary of actually using a Cron job for that because you would have to, it's, it's an interactive uh, job. So whenever you create your super user, you enter in your email and your username, which is fine, but then you have to enter in your password. And I would, I personally would not feel comfortable uh, putting a password in plain text to have it automatically create a super user for me on cron. Also, that's not the type of job that you would want to do repeatedly. That's kind of a one-time setup. Um, so yeah, some tasks definitely would benefit from the cron. And I, uh, thanks for the recommendation. I'll go ahead and I'll make a video about that next time. Okay, so that's a really interesting bug because urllib is part of the Python standard library. So make sure that your Python environment is set up properly and that you're using a newer version of Python. I think the default version of Python on that platform is 3.8. Um, however, urllib is one of the original like Python standard library apps. It goes all the way back. I, In my documentation research, it goes all the way back to even 2.5. So um that's an interesting error i would definitely say just ensure that your python environment is set up correctly because there's no reason why you should be getting that error if that makes sense maybe it's a typo make sure you typed it incorrectly because i do that all the time there's two l's in url lib uh well i'm mostly a back-end developer and i don't really play around with node.js a lot however uh, my peer, Chris, who's another one of the developer advocates with me here at DigitalOcean, does a lot of stuff around Node.js and static sites and all of that. So I, if there isn't a video out already by the time this comes out, I guarantee you he'll be making one soon, so keep your eyes open for that video. So. You could use Nginx here to help properly display static files, but honestly, I don't feel like that would be the best use of App Platform. Um, whenever you deploy a service to App Platform, you immediately get a static site for free or static sites um, once you have paid, done a paid service. And what you can do is you can actually take this exact same repository that you have and deploy it as a static site. What will happen is the build pack will actually run all of the collect static files and dump them in a folder. And then whenever you run this, you're going to specify, hey, I think the folder is called static or whatever you set it up in your settings file. This is where I want to serve these files from. And then at platform will serve your static files for you across, across a global CDN, uh, may, meaning that's so much easier for your users to be able to access your content because they're going to be getting the cache of the files that are closest to them. So I may do a tutorial for fun on how to do this with Nginx, but in reality, um, you would get much better performance and have a much less complex deployment if you just deploy these also using static uh, the static site setting with App Platform. I love you too. So yeah, that would actually be really cool. Um, I've never actually got around to playing with GitHub Actions, uh, but I really need to. Um, I might do a tutorial on it, that's a good suggestion. In reality though, I I don't really deploy my Django apps to a droplet anymore. App Platform has really kind of removed the necessity for me to have to set up Nginx and then you know G-Unicorn and then get all of that working. Um, App Platform just kind of does it for me, but that being said, that's an interesting idea, and I love interesting ideas, so I'm going to probably make some sort of tutorial or video on it, so be on the lookout, because I'll definitely make that. Uh, but if you want a, simpl a more simplistic deployment, I would say just go with that platform. Okay, so there's a few reasons why you might be seeing this error. Um, so whenever you do the typical Django setup, like if you were to do the Django tutorial, it has you create everything 
one layer deeper inside of directories than app platform expects. So you would have like my project and then inside of that directory, you'd have my project and then your manage.py and then inside of that other one, there'd be your settings file. Uh, app platform doesn't really like this. You want to take the directory that has everything at the manage.py level and that needs to be your top level directory. So you will probably want to remove the, that topmost directory and when you commit to GitHub, manage.py, and then everything that would be inside of that needs to be, you know, what you would see if you go to GitHub and you click on your project, that's what would be the first files that would show up. Also, another reason that you might be getting this is you don't have your requirements.txt set up. And if you don't have that and it doesn't install Django, then it probably won't find the command for it. So you need to make sure that uh, manage.py is visible and that requirements.txt is visible in the top level um, and then it should detect that it's a Django file, install the appropriate packages and your app should be working just fine. <laughs> you know, that's that's not a bad idea. I haven't really played around with Fast API much, but it's on my list, so I'm definitely going to look into that. Thanks for the suggestion. Well, thanks for watching the video and thanks for all the great questions. Uh, if you have any more, feel free to leave them in the comments on this video or on our other YouTube videos. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can know when more of these videos are coming out and leave us a like on this video if you enjoy seeing uh, myself or other advocates answer questions and we'll keep the content coming. Thanks everyone.